we do have a bit of an obstructed view of what is turning out to be a debate. I, to me, it looks like Tandy. I said Shadow earlier because of the limp, but there's something about her that looks Tandyish, and I know some of you are saying Tandy, so. I mean, obviously, you guys have got access to the spot patterns and can see, but it's just so strange that the two of them both have a limp. Now, the interesting thing is, I'm trying to remember, Shadow, which leg it was, if it was the right or the left leg. I think it was the right leg, and this looks like the left leg of this individual that's a bit sore, so it must be Tundi. Also, it would make far more sense where we are to be Tundi than it would be Shadow, so I don't know. I mean, it's... <laughs> the two of them often... I get a bit confused, but to me, the first, as I saw her just now, I thought Tandy first before anything else, but I went on what the guys told me this morning and the fact that she was limping and that it was Shadow, but I would say it must be Tandy. But then, who's the one that's on a kill in Torchwood that the guys were calling Tandy because they saw both Inkanyeni and Tandy this morning on two different kills? So, well, what they said was Tandy, which begs a question as to who is the other leopard then? that is up that side maybe it is Tandy's daughter Kuchaba and everyone's just getting but they don't look similar at all it's a very odd thing to kind of go through I think there's a bit of a misidentification amongst all of them and it just goes to show sometimes you get a little excited about seeing the leopards and you kind of misidentify them so I do apologize if it is Tandy I'm very sorry that I said it was Shadow it should have known better and, and like I say something to me was not right I just wasn't 100 percent sure and I just was going off what the other guys were talking about this morning, but it does look like Tundi to me as well. There's something about her that is Tundi 100%. So I'm sure some of you maybe have got some spots and screenshots that you can match up for those that are a little unsure and for those that don't really know how we identify them. Maybe somebody's got some nice right and left of the two of them and, and so that we can see the differences for everybody else out there. And she's just moved a little bit. She's gone up onto a, onto a hill where really we can't get to her this, this is the closest that i can get at the moment she's up on top and look at that camouflage i was saying earlier why it's easy to drive past them and you can see why look at the camouflage that you see there and you can really miss this leopard in two ticks so we're going to wait for her and if she falls asleep like that it's easy to get there on the other side from where i am now not so easy but it is easier to get to her from the other side so we will try and make our way around but it's so all very confusing Tumba. So Seb saying if it is Tandy then hopefully we'll see them reunite with Tumba in this area. Hopefully I, w I would imagine that they would reunite given that Tumba was apparently seen around this area this morning as well so it would be nice. Um, she's got no physical sign of an injury so it seems as though it's something much like Shadow. Same thing it's just a small limp that they've got. The other female that we saw with the limp is definitely Shadow so it's just so strange that both females have ended up with a front leg injury in the last month or so it's, it's an odd thing altogether now angie you wondering how she could have got the injury number of ways she could have been chasing an animal put a foot in a ditch by mistake that she didn't see she could have overextended it when hunting she could have caught something big and fallen on it she could have um you know there's many possibilities slipped out of a tree and just sprained it slightly there's a lot of things that can go wrong in a leopard's eye. It, it doesn't look like a physical battle with another leopard. So for those of you thinking maybe she came to the aid of Tumba last night with Hosanna, it doesn't look like that. So if you if you see a leopard once it's fought and it has an injury where it's got hurt by another leopard, there'll generally be some sort of puncture wound. Remember that these animals have sharp claws, sharp teeth, and they can bite and pierce the coats of, of other animals. And so when they fight with one another, there's generally very visible signs that they fought. You remember when she fought with... Shongile, she had those little cuts across her face so there's normally some sort of sign of an injury if they fought and especially to get a wound or to get a leg that sore. I would imagine this is more in a hunting situation or maybe trying to escape another predator. She jumped up a tree and just twisted it slightly but she is putting weight on it and, and she is moving so maybe it will just work itself out but it's crazy 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 that both sisters are carrying limps at the moment. It's a weird thing and not something you would see very often at all. Maybe why she's in these dense thickets at the moment just resting, but interesting nonetheless. Shame, Michael. And you can see she's not happy about it. Earlier when she came past us, there was a few teeth bared and, and a bit of hissing. <laughs> so, so, Kim, you think that maybe they both went out dancing together with their high heels on and have come home with sore feet. 
that they partied a little bit too much on the weekend. Or well, maybe that's the case, but <laughs> in all likelihood, like I say, it's all a situation that they've probably done something in order to survive and try and grab food or something like that. But imagine if leopards did wear high heels. That would be quite weird. It would be a very odd thing to see. And I would imagine that Tundi would be a lot more grumpy than she is now if she had to wear high heels through this bush and climb trees in them. Of course, I wouldn't know the first thing about high heels, but I'm, but I'm told that they're not very comfortable by those that are in the know, which are the ladies out there. And so imagine trying to climb a tree in a pair of high heels. It would be really quite something. What color do you think she would wear for Tandia? Tandia and Shadow, I suppose, would have different different high heel pairs. We're delving into completely ridiculous situation here and, and conversation, but... So Tandia in red, Megan, you reckon she's a... She's a red kind of lass. And what about Shadow, Megan? You've got to, you can't just give one sister and not the other. You can't be biased. So Tundi in red, Shadow in black, maybe to go with her name. It's not a, not a bad a set of black. There we go. So Shadow in black and Tundi in red. And that's how they roll, the sisters, when they go out on the town. Shame, my girl. Seems to be a rough winter so far. We're in Kuma, female with an injury, Shadow, Tundi. Whew. It's all happening, really. It's a tough life being a cat out here. So for all of those, all of you that think these cats have it fairly easy and that life out here is a cakewalk for a predator, you can see that it is in no way that way. There's females of all, well, two adult females that are experienced adult females in the forms of leopards that are both injured and then a lioness from the Inkuhuma Pride. And she's also one of the older lionesses who's also experienced and she's carrying a massive injury too. So... Even the more experienced females will sometimes get themselves into trouble and it's just the nature of living out here. This is not an easy place to live. It's not, you know, designed for uh, animals to, to just have a holiday and to move around and not really worry about things. It's a hard life out here. These animals are fighting day in and day out to be alive and it really is amazing that they do live to the years that they do in a situation like this, particularly here in the Sabi Sands. You can see the terrain is not flat in any way. It's undulating. There's little dips and ditches, aardvark burrows and holes that warthogs have dug up and elephants have dug for roots and there's thickets and trees and, and then also a high density of, of other predators that makes life a lot harder for these poor cats. So it's not an easy way existence and, and definitely not something that these leopards or lions have to take for granted. They've got to work every day to survive. Um, Patricia, as I said just now, when I was saying that for those of you that think that she might have protected Tumba last night, that's not going to be the case. There are no visible signs of wounds on her. So there's no cuts around her face, no cuts on her paws, no bite marks on her back or anything like that. And to sustain a serious injury like that, there would be some sort of bite mark. So you would see a canine through the foot or a some sort of injury somewhere to suggest that she got into a fight. A wound like or an injury where she's limping like that is not going to be just from swatting at the other leopard and then running away and not getting a scratch on her. There. For her to get into that closer contact to be able to hurt her own paw would have meant that the other leopard would have been right on her and they're definitely Definitely would have been some sign. Like I say, when you saw with Shongile, that Shongile ended up with a, a claw injury. She had a little bite on her tail, and Tandi had scratches across her face. So both would have come out with something for her to have an injury like that. And we've noticed no other cuts on her. I didn't see any when she came past us. I didn't see any on her hips, on her back, anywhere there. So I think it's more just a strain injury from hunting or running, and her foot has gone into somewhere. And it's like us when we twist our ankles. Same kind of thing. So she's run through and had a slight twist and hurt herself. But whatever the case is, she's a sleepy cat now. And I wonder, if she, I reckon eventually she's going to end up at Twin Dams. She's moved a little bit further towards there. And we're not far from the road at all. I can see Twin Dams Road maybe 50 meters to my left. So she's not far from the road and she will start heading slowly but surely in that direction as the afternoon wears on. What I think what we're going to do is from here, it's it's a very difficult visual um, that we've got. It's a small gap across this very deep undulating terrain. So I'm going to try and get across to the other side and see if I can't get a better view. And while we do that, let's go to Jamie with her tall spotted lanky animals that she's been following around this afternoon.